Hi, we have Rohit Berry, CIO at True Beacon with us at LiveMint.com. Uh, thank you so much, Rohit, for joining us. Uh, let me start by understanding what do you make of the current market mood with the festivities going on, with the whole cheer and you know brightness around. Do you also see the market to kind of follow that uh, route as we would want it to be, or do you see the volatility that we are seeing right now to continue, especially that we are going to step into a new year? and with inflation in mind and you know also recession fears being you know emerged what do you have to say in the whole market mood right now so saloni first of all thanks for having me uh, i think uh, markets are in a challenging environment uh, despite festivities i will advise everybody that it's time to be a little cautious india is in some sense a global exception at the moment right now if you look at last over 12 to 18 months indian markets have outperformed its global peers even after adjusting for uh, rupee depreciation. And rather even rupee has outperformed its glo global peers against dollar. Uh, the credit for most part over there goes to RBI management of rupee. Uh, but our domestic demand story is intact. So I think that's the silver lining. Uh, globally, when we see the entire uh, situation, uh, Europe is already in doldrums. Uh, UK seems to be going the same way. US, while currently demand seems to be intact, job growth is very good, wages are rising, but Fed is very determined to control inflation. For controlling inflation, they have to raise rates, which will eventually lead to slowdown. And potentially, in all likelihood, US will go into recession. So I think global demand is will go into slump. There will be a slump, whether it will last one quarters or four quarters, uh, it is difficult for me to predict at this point in time and we will have some impact of that. From that perspective, overall, if I say I am slightly negatively biased towards uh, equity markets, uh, I believe uh, there is some more room for correction in Indian markets. Uh, some corrections happened, but again, today we had a good amount of rally in the Indian market. So market seems to be poised in a very determined manner that Indian story is intact and uh, there's not much to be worried about. I broadly agree with that, but I still fear that we cannot be uh, looking at markets in isolation, we have to take global factors into account. We have to take into account that RBI has raised another 50 basis points and there is more to come. Uh, so there will be uh, some short term impacts. I think volatility is here to stay. Uh, I will expect that we will see bottom over the next one quarter or so. Three to six month period market should bottom out. I do not expect markets to correct by more than 10% at this point in time. That That is where I will draw the line that if there is a downside, it's probably capped at 10% more fall from here. Uh, but if you are an investor who is a long term investor, who is looking at three to five year horizon and who has a well balanced portfolio, I don't think so there is anything to worry about. Uh, but if you are an investor who is overexposed to equity, uh, I think it might be a prudent call to look at your rebalancing your portfolio, move some of your exposure away from equity because it is in turbulent. Uh, we are in turbulent times and there was turbulent times given the global economic outlook and geopolitical situation will continue. Despite India being in a very good uh, geopolitical situation. We are kind of in a Goldilocks zone on geopolitically, uh, but that doesn't mean that entire effect of that will be positive in the markets. What kind of instruments, of course, equities are there, but if you could uh, shed light upon the kind of instruments that you know investors can look at, especially during the volatile times, be it traditional methods or you know stocks, mutual funds, and what percentage or kind of how how should they rebalance it to kind of have a smooth, not exactly a smooth ride, but at least avoid the turbulence you know at its utmost so see uh, avoiding the turbulence obviously will come at a huge cost uh, right we have to keep in mind that inflation in india is close to seven to eight percent right so if you go really conservative uh, you will be actually losing money because fixed in most fixed income assets uh, will not be earning you enough to beat inflation uh, so there is only so much you can do uh, if you are young uh, or if you're financially well off, I will still tell people that you need to be biased towards having large equity exposure. You definitely need to have real estate to your portfolio. Uh, I think that's one of the best hedges against inflation and turbulent times in India. Given that we are a growth economy with young population, with a uh, growing middle class, uh, the demand for homes are not going down. So I think real estate tends to do 
Well, obviously, over the last ten years, real estate has not given good returns, and I think rightly so because they became it became overpriced. But that's it's a good time, I think, to have some bit add some bit of real estate in your portfolio because I think. In inflationary times, real estate tends to do very well. That is one. Secondly, I personally think uh, one should stay away from fixed deposits. Uh, they don't yield. Uh, after adjusting for inflation, you are basically earning negative. You are losing money on your cash. You rather sit on cash looking for opportunities as and when they arise than invest, in my opinion, in fixed deposits. You'll be much better off doing. Fixed income mutual funds and even guilds. Hmm. Um, I think uh, if you look at guilds uh, and you compare it to one-year fixed deposit rate, you will realize not only you are earning higher interest rate by investing in guild funds, but also it's more tax efficient to do so. Um, on fixed deposits, you will lose out on TDS on a quarterly basis, whereas on a uh, guild fund. Till the time you are invested, there is no TDS, and if you are end up being invested for a long term, uh, you take advantage of both indexing and capital lower capital long term capital gain taxes. Uh, so I think one has to be very careful about dividing their portfolio across uh, equities, fixed income, real estate, and even to some extent gold, which has traditionally every Indian family has been overexposed to. So if you are sitting on a lot of pile of physical gold, then maybe not worth adding more. Uh, but if you are a part of the you know under thirties kind of a, this thing and you haven't invested in gold, maybe it's time to add gold as well to your portfolio. Uh, so I think one has to be clear about being well balanced to young people, to uh, you know people with the fixed cash flow, salary people. I think I still. Will Will always suggest SIPs as a great instrument. Uh, it brings about certain discipline. It also, uh, you know, does some bit of a dollar cost averaging where you don't have to worry about what price pricing you are buying at. And in the long term, it works out very well. Um, so be balanced. Don't be over overexposed to equity. But I don't think so in a country like India, which is a growth market, young country, you can significantly move away from equity. Uh, Portfolio, uh, but uh, do expose yourself to other asset classes. Uh, as you mentioned, kids, you know, and uh, let's talk about government securities. Uh, do you think there are better options than at least fixed deposits? If someone wants to not directly go and have an equity exposure, do you think they can kind of at least choose? Uh, Gilts or government securities or bonds that matter. At least that would be better compared to FTs. Absolutely. See, uh, today if you go to a bank on FD rate, I don't know exactly where one F one year FD rate right now is, but assuming it is somewhere between uh, six 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 and a half percent, you can get six and a half percent on government uh, bonds for one year, which is one carries less risk. Two, you can invest in them via fund structure. When you invest via fund structure, your tax is deferred. Your tax is deferred to the point till you redeem, which means even if today, if you thought that you will be investing only for nine months, uh, and it's going to be a short-term capital gains, in which case you will be paying the same marginal tax rate as you will pay on FTE. But think of a scenario where you nine months down the line, you don't need money and you keep in, remain invested, and that investment turns into three-year investment. For three years, you did not pay any taxes, CDS, or any kind of tax on that. And at the end of three years, it's now a long-term capital gain product where you get benefit of indexation. Your tax liability will likely going to be less than five or ten percent compared to if you are on thirty-three percent, thirty-five percent bracket. One third of your income would have interest income would have gone to the government. At the end of three years, you are actually not paying anything to the government or marginal amount to the government. So from an overall IRR perspective, even adjusting for the fund manager's fees, you'll be doing much better. So my advice to people have always been, listen, stay away from fixed deposit. If you need to do fixed deposit for extremely short term period, one month, three months, yes, by all means do that. But otherwise, uh, guild funds are a good alternative, more tax efficient alternative to fixed deposits. Um, I think the best way to end this conversation would be you telling us the major myths and facts about investing that investors have. 
I think one of the major issues in invest, investment is people don't understand the volatility or risk very well. And they aim for higher returns and they are willing to take higher risk. Uh, and that trade-off is not very well understood in the, uh, in the investor world, particularly in the people who are not very closely monitoring their investment. Uh, you know, a 12% return with 20% volatility usually fare far worse than let's say a 10% return with close to with half the volatility of that because of one simple fact which you know everybody knows about it but they never really take into account other than smart investors is compounding the power of compounding is just immense if you lose 20 percent of a portfolio in a year you need to make 25 percent to break even that's a massive amount of uh, recovery you have to do just to break even so if you can reduce your uh, downside from 20% only to 10%, you know, you don't need to make 12.5%. You only need to make 11%. And that year on year adds up. If you do a simple simulation on Excel, you will realize how volatility hurts you. Uh, so even if you're getting a couple of percentage points higher, but the in terms of volatility, you are taking a risk which is 5 to 7% higher. It's most likely not worth it. It. That also applies when you do it yourself. You know, particularly this is what people don't realize is when they are managing their own book and they can find a simple mutual fund which is going to give them 14% versus if they can generate themselves 16 or 17. After taking into account additional volatility and inefficient tax rate, they're actually going to be far worse off than investing in that mutual fund which is only going to give them 14. Uh, so I think it's, I, I will encourage everyone to actually sit on Excel, do that math and figure out what the real return after tax returns are going to be over a long period of time and they will realize it's not worth it. Uh, unless they can really resoundingly make 20-22%, uh, they will always be doing worse than a fund manager.